Uh, you brought a, an interesting article because uh, one of the callers uh, last week asked about uh, atheist hospitals mm -hmm. and things like and that schools. and schools. And uh, you brought up an interesting yeah. article here. Responding to a question we got uh, last week, I believe, the question was where are the atheist hospitals or atheist schools paid for, brought about, and built by atheists? And I guess they were looking for a hospital that said atheist general hospital. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, there are several reasons why you don't see that uh, in, in, in many places, in most places, in fact, in the U.S. And uh, one story, in fact, I want to turn into a short segment every week, a story about unsung atheist heroes. And um, this comes out of the 1998 wall calendar for American atheists, and it's from May, although we're skipping a month here or two. Uh, it's about Stephen Gerrard, a man who lived 1750 to 1831. And real quick, I want to try sure. to get this in just a minute here. He was born in Bordeaux, France, of a poor couple who could not provide him with an education, so all he learned was through his own efforts. Although blind in his right eye from childhood, he was hired as a cabin boy when about ten years old, and worked so diligently the captain promoted him to mate, then to command of a small vessel. He began speculating on futures, and always made a profit. He came to Philadelphia in 1769, continuing as a captain and merchant, and with his profits bought more businesses and more ships, naming them after Voltaire, Montesquieu, Helvetius, and Rousseau, his favorite authors. In 1793, yellow fever spread throughout Philadelphia. Those yet unaffected fled the city, and the sick were left to die unattended. Stephen Gerard went from door to door, tending to deserted sick people. Once the panic was over, he went back to work, earning millions of dollars before he died. And he left $10 million for public works, not a penny, however, to any church. Uh, his funeral was unattended by the clergy. Yes. One section of his will was set up for a college or a boys' school for orphans, into which no clergyman was allowed to enter. This led to a challenge in court to allow religion on the campus, but the court upheld Stephen's will. The religionists found another way around the restriction, however. The will said no minister, so they forced the boys to attend two prayer sessions Monday through Saturday with three on Sunday, all led by different religious laymen. Thus did the religionists thwart Stephen's will and obtain the $2 million he had given for the establishment of a secular school. This is just one example of how very often when an atheist does come across this much money in their lifetime and wants to be a philanthropist and donate it or start up a school or a hospital or something else like that, uh, very often uh, the biggest challenge is religion. And, uh, I, I, and the, like I said, we'll point it out again, that's part of the reason for the atheist community of Austin is to increase the uh, visibility of atheists. Let us let the community know that we're real people. We have good hearts. We're out there trying to do good things. Uh, a lot of people, when they think atheists, they think Satanists. Uh, we get this all the time. We don't believe in heaven. We don't believe in hell. So we can't. You know, we're not out there worshiping Satan and all this other stuff. You know, we we try. Uh, we. We was at the AIDS walk. Uh, what was uh, the uh, victims' rights uh, bill? The uh, right, the the hate crime march. Hate we crime march. we was at the hate crime march. Uh, so we you know we tried to do. Well, <laughs> it uh, we've been pointed out we didn't make it into any of the precinct party meetings after the votes there, but uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're getting better. We're trying to get politically active. We have members in our group that w you know are trying to. Uh, get us guided politically, and we do appreciate all the education and everything else. 